The first man-made object in space was a satellite sent up by the Soviet Union in 1959. This simple satellite made a beeping sound as it traveled around the Earth, and that is all it could do. But this was enough to start the space race. The United States started its own space program, and the current president of the United States at the time, John F. Kennedy, said in a famous speech to the Congress on May 25, 1961, I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind or more important for the long range exploration of space. And none will be so difficult or expensive to accomplish. Technological sophistication of the time required that men be at the controls as computer power and wireless technology had not progressed to the point that a machine could do it alone. In fact, we landed on the moon with the computing power of a standard high school calculator. Since that time, our technology is such that we can achieve many of the goals of our space program without sending a human into space, but should we? Every few years, the question of whether robots or humans should be used for space exploration is brought up with a multitude of arguments on both sides, but it always ends with no definite answer. These discussions usually come up after an accident, particularly when there is loss of life, such as after the Columbia and Challenger disasters. Each time the space program picks itself up from a disaster, we have to answer the question yet again, is this worth the loss of life or should we send robots in our place? Space is a hostile place for humans. All their needs must be brought with them at an enormous cost. The missions must also be planned to avoid stressing our fragile bodies. We need food, water, and air which requires complicated and heavy equipment. All this machinery needs to be monitored, reducing an astronaut's available time to carry out experiments. Its weight alone reduces the amount of scientific equipment that can be brought. Many scientists believe it is better to use robotic missions for space exploration, given that a robotic mission costs between 10 and 100 times less than a manned mission. On manned missions, careful safety precautions must be taken, and in space, these safety precautions can be incredibly expensive. In the future, robotic missions will be more advanced and will therefore provide more crucial data in regards to the exploration of space. As computers become more capable and reliable, robots of greater complexity will be built to handle even the most challenging tasks. The time for humans to explore space may be gone forever, or is it? All scientists believe there is a lot of value in robotic exploration of space, but many of these same scientists say there is a need for manned missions as well. Most agree that for basic survey missions, robotic probes produce very good results. But in the study of the geology of planets and the search for life, many scientists think that robotic missions are not sufficient. Part of the problem is the limited abilities of each robotic mission. To save money and reduce failure rates, robotic probes are stripped down to the bare bone. Although these probes gather important data, much of it is unclear because the probe cannot do backup tests. Everything the probe does, and the equipment that it uses, has to be put into the robot before it leaves the ground. Today's robots cannot start up new lines of investigation. This repeated testing of results becomes difficult with unmanned mission failure rates. In the exploration of Mars, out of 31 missions by the USSR, US, and Japan since 1960, all but 10 failed, and only 5 met their original goals. Manned missions have very high rates of success, almost 
Crude missions are more costly, but also more effective. Human experiments set up on the moon by Apollo missions functioned perfectly for eight years. Robotic missions may carry similar instruments, but are difficult to place and calibrate. Strength wins over accuracy, so instruments placed by robots are less sensitive in the data they collect. Robots must rely on redundancy to deal with any problems, while astronauts can creatively solve almost every problem. The Hubble Space Telescope was repaired by teams from the Space Shuttle, making it one of the most successful missions ever. Geologists are the biggest supporters of manned missions. While robot probe data is useful, they say one mission with a live geologist could answer all their questions in a few weeks, while endless robotic probes may never be able to provide a clear picture of a planet such as Mars's geology. A geologist can apply all of his or her senses to quickly decide what to study and what to ignore. Robotic probes could easily miss important clues and waste time on things that have no value. A human still has much better vision than even the best video cameras, and most importantly, a human can process data with the best computer in the world, his brain, without any help. Along with many scientists, the public also feels it is very important to keep manned spaceflight alive. Polls show 80% or more of common people support continuation of manned programs such as the shuttle and the International Space Station, despite accidents, problems, and the great expense. People see themselves conquering space, not robots. Support for astronauts extends well beyond opinion polls. People are spending money to go into space as tourists. The best example of a possible future for human spaceflight is the recent Russian policy of taking on paying guests, the first space tourists. Already, three people have paid the $20 million price tag to visit the International Space Station. So instead of a laboratory for cutting-edge science, it may become a multi-billion dollar hotel. The heart of the debate is this. Robotic machines will only do what they are programmed to do. They are not programmed to detect the strange and unexpected. Will unmanned robotic missions be able to detect weird microscopic life forms that are not programmed to recognize that might be on Mars or beneath the Sea of Europa where life is suspected to exist. The cost and risks of sending humans to the moon, Mars, or other places outweighs the benefits for at least the next decade. Until that balance is shifted by the development of new spacecraft and protective measures that reduce the danger to humans, robots will do the job. As technology progresses, as it constantly does, humans will follow in the footsteps of the robots. Even when this point is reached, though, there still will be a role for robots. Robots will most likely be used as assistants and will handle the repetitive or dangerous tasks. But only human explorers can do certain jobs and react quickly to a changing environment. They are also the only ones who can get a feel of what something is truly like. This debate will not stop, and the tasks of robots and the humans will likely be better defined over time. Some things are certain. People will not stop exploring, and robots will be by their side. Perhaps the argument for manned spaceflight is best summed up by the astronomer Royal Martin Rees. My view about manned spaceflight is that, as a scientist and practical man, I'm against it, but as a human being, I'm in favor of it. Advances in robotics is making the case for manned spaceflight weaker, but there is still a need for it in terms of human adventure. Should we send people into space? It is the ultimate adventure to boldly go 
where no man has gone before.